<laughs> There's no doubt about it, is there? Summertime is the time of year when we can really enjoy our dogs. The days are long and the nights are nice and warm, but summertime does bring with it a few problems. Now, most of these are preventable, so I want to share a few with you. Now, not everybody's got a swimming pool. And besides, you've got to let the dog into the swimming pool area and keep an eye on the dog when it's in there. So what happens when you're not at home? Well, what about one of these? It's a kiddies paddle pool. So be careful if you've got kiddies around too, you've got to keep an eye on them. But for Emma, what an ideal situation. If you like, she could even lie down and get wet all over. Dogs got a few brains, you know. They know water means get cool. You also need to make sure they have drinking water at all times and it's essential they can't tip it over. So if you're a keen gardener, what about a fish pond or maybe even a lily pond in a large tub? But if you're not into gardening, then this is the thing for you. It's permanently plumbed in, it's a horse drinker and it will never let you down. Or your dog for that matter. It sort of says something about summer, doesn't it? An ice block. Kids love them and you know what? Dogs are like kids. Dogs actually like the taste and the feel of ice in their mouth. You can also make a DIY doggy ice block. So this is basically a soup mixture with some dog food in the bottom. What are you going to do? When I mean, you're going to go out, you'll take it to the south side of the house, right? Where it's in shade and it's cool. And you pop it on the ground. There you are. How does that look? Want to lick the lip? He's getting the leftovers. Don't we all like the leftovers? They're the best bits. Good chill, isn't it? Would you like that one down there? Heat stress in dogs is dangerous. Excessive panting, frothing at the mouth, and in bad cases collapse are some of the symptoms, and often organ damage follows. One of the biggest culprits is having your dog inside one of these. Because temperatures in cars can double in an hour. And to prove my point, I've put three thermometers in this car. And after just 60 minutes, external temperature, 24 degrees centigrade. Internal, the one on the dash, 42. And the one on the console, 40. So how do we get these to go down quite quickly? We've got a dry towel here and a wet towel here. Now, what we're going to do on top of all of this is to flick our fan on. And I'm watching the temperature drop, and it is dropping like a stone. The water is turning to vapour. And when that happens, it actually produces cold. Now you can do the same thing for your dog. Hose it down and put the fan on. And that's what you want to do. So putting a fan on a dry dog does very, very little. Putting a fan on a wet dog, that, my friends, is the answer. But if symptoms persist, the next step is to get to your vet as quickly as you possibly can. And of course, make sure you apply sunscreen to your dog particularly to any exposed white skin. And pick one for sensitive skin or for kids. Another serious problem at this time of year that causes issues is a tick, a paralysis tick. Really nasty little devil. Most ticks you'll find, probably 90%, around the head. Don't forget to look inside the ears, inside the mouth, and around the neck region. Sort of go against the run of the coat. What are you feeling for? Something that's like a little pimple. It wouldn't be an Aussie summer, would it? Without a Barbie. Okay, so it's just about done. Occasionally, an uninvited guest turns up and knocks off a sausage. When you look at my barbecue plate, there are things here which dogs can have and things which they can't have. For a start, lamb cutlet. Is that good for Django? No, because there's a cooked bone there. So that's out. Dogs cannot digest cooked bones. They cause lots of problems. Get jammed across the roof of their mouth, jammed over teeth, but more importantly, can create obstructions in the intestine. And the same thing applies to cooked chicken. What about these? Onions. As far as dogs are concerned, this is really toxic stuff. Raw or cooked, it doesn't matter. Onions are out. And what about these? You're going to say to me, but Dr. Harry, you know, that's just cooked chicken. Yeah, folks, that is just cooked chicken. The problem is that when we've finished eating it, what that bit? The cooked chicken itself is fine, but see this? What do you do with that? Well, that has all the flavour of cooked chicken. The 
dog doesn't know the difference. If I were to offer that to Django, he would eat that. Imagine the sort of damage that something sharp and wooden like that could do to his mouth, and worse still his throat if he tries to swallow it. If you're thinking of sharing your barbie with your best mate, well, here's a few tips. Don't cook it. Don't cook Django it. can have a raw chicken leg, no worry at all. He can have a raw cutlet, no problem at all, because the bone hasn't been cooked. He can have a cooked sausage, but not the spicy stuff and not too many of them, because they do contain preservatives, or well, most do, and we're going to try and avoid their 